Let's apply some ultimate top coat. This is in the natural or the matte finish, if you will. Hey everyone, Keith McGinnis here with KCDC Designs. So I'm gonna keep posting these videos on how I apply the ultimate top coat. Because <clears throat> I love the product and um, I, I don't want other people having issues with it. So I'm gonna continue to post these videos. I've got uh, just a, it's a fairly small project. That is a table for uh, an RV, but, and that's 12 square feet. So 12 square feet times 0.265 came out to about two ounces and I'm gonna mix up three ounces because it's easier to figure. So I'm gonna be applying the ultimate top coat, the natural, which is the matte finish. This is a bottle that has been previously opened um, and it was opened on July 27th. So it's about two months ago that this was open. So again, it's very important with the mat that you agitate that bottle. I don't shake vigorously, I just agitate to get the matting agents released that may settle at the bottom of the bottle. <clears throat> so I'm gonna be mixing, it's two to one, I need three ounces, I'm gonna be mixing two ounces of part A, and I'm gonna mix one ounce of part B. As you can see, I've got two bottles here that I need to use, I need to use up. Uh, by the way, the part B can be used for gloss or the natural doesn't matter with those. Okay, what I have discovered is that there are times that there are some matting agents, especially on a previously opened bottle, uh, that may not dissolve. And so what these are, these are sink basket strainers. This is what goes around um, the basket in your sink. It's fairly wide open, especially if you stretch it so I'm using four of those on my cup. And so I'm going to strain this into the cup until I get my two ounces. Then I'll add my part B, stir that up. Then I'm gonna add, get called for one half ounce of water, which is about 15 milliliters. So I got a little dosage cup that works really well. Once I have that mixed up completely, I'll mix up part A, part B fully. Then I'll add the water, mix that up fully. Then I'm going to put some basket strainers back over my cup and then I'm going to strain it into my paint tray that I have some press and seal in. Um, it's also very important is to deshed your rollers. So I use some tape. I'm going to be using two rollers, one wet roller, one dry roller. <clears throat> I normally will have two dry rollers prepped for every one wet roller, but again, this is a fairly small project. I hope I don't regret that because as I'm rolling the edges, I wanna make sure I have the wire going down. If I have this way while I'm rolling the edges, it's always possible that I may hit the table, pick up some debris on my roller. If I do that, then I'm gonna make sure I have another dry roller prepped and ready. That being said, if I don't have a dry roller prepped and ready, I'm gonna need one. So I'm gonna get another dry roller prepped and ready just so I have it. If I have it, I won't need it. You know how it goes, if I don't have it, I'm probably gonna need it. So I might as well have it prepped and have it ready. Another additional step that I take, <clears throat> I have a nine inch roller um, I have tape backwards on this roller and I can already see it's picked up quite a bit of debris. So I'm going to put another layer on there. By the way, if you use a nine inch roller, which I do on larger jobs, this is a nine inch roller from Purdy, P-U-R-D-Y. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive of a roller. Do not buy these. They shed and shed and shed and shed. You can de-shed these three or four times and every time you're gonna pick up more debris. So since I already had them, that's what I use as my lint roller. By the way, I prefer to use regular masking tape over the blue painter's tape. Just seems to me a little stickier. I am intentionally not putting that tape on tightly. I gotta curl it around the edge too because I've noticed that as I go across my surface, 
that that tape can creep one way or the other. Uh, but I don't put that on extremely tight because I want to be able to, to me, it just seems like it uh, will pick up more material <clears throat> that way. So I'll turn the camera just a little bit. And this is all I do. Okay, so I've gone over with my lint roller. Um, I've already sanded with 220. I've prepped, I've wiped it down. The last step is going over that with my lint roller, which I just did. I have my rollers deshedded. I have my paint tray ready. And now I'm going to be, and I've already agitated my UTC. <clears throat> Now I'm going to strain it. I need two ounces of this. Okay, I've got two ounces. And looking at the top of my strainer, there are a few very, very small bits of debris. Okay. And at this point, the clock is running. I'm not too concerned. I know I have about a 15 minute working time. Uh, but again, this is a uh, fairly small surface. But what's important is that I do get this mixed up thoroughly. Okay. While I'm mixing this up, um, it seems like the struggle that most people have with the ultimate top coat is roller marks and or lap lines. To me, again, lap lines are an excess amount of product that comes off of each end or either end of your roller. Whereas roller marks are being able to see the pattern of how you rolled on the product with your wet roller after it's fully dried. So after it's fully dried, if you can see the pattern of how you applied the product, because those roller marks will be somewhat directional, that tells me that you just did not add enough product to the surface. Or that the product started uh, to set up on you or start drying before you had a chance to dry roll it. So I guess if there's anything that I've learned with the Ultimate Top Coat uh, is making sure that you add enough product to the surface to allow your dry roller to do what it is intended to do. And that is to pick up a little bit of excess product and smooth out the surface. So after I roll it on with my wet roller, I'm gonna back roll with my wet roller one last time, being careful not to over roll the ultimate top coat, especially the natural. Okay, so that's thoroughly mixed. Got a good consistency. I'm gonna wipe my stick off. All right, so I am now going to get my strainers and put those back over my cup to strain it one last time into my paint tray. Three ounces is a very small amount of product. I probably wouldn't mix up any less than three ounces. Okay, so I've strained this twice. I've gone over with my makeshift Um, lint roller. I've got my two dry rollers for my one wet roller and now I want to completely saturate my roller. As you can see three ounces doesn't leave a lot of product. I may not be able to get one more saturation. So I'm going to turn the camera
I'm saving my edges for last, and the reason why is because, especially of having a rock edge, man, really take your time with your wet roller and make sure that you have full coverage. Okay, so I'm gonna back roll one last time. I'm gonna keep my wire to my leading edge. That's where the weight is. And all I'm doing here is back rolling to get out the heavy lap lines from my wet roller. Now I'm gonna go around and catch my edges. And because I have an aggressive, semi-aggressive rock edge, I want to make sure I take the time to make sure I get full coverage in all the little crooks and crannies. And it appears that I do. Okay, so now let's dry roll. So while I'm dry rolling, I want to stress some very, very important points. As you saw when I back rolled with my wet roller, again, I'm doing that because I want to eliminate any heavy lap lines and I want to get that service as smooth as I can possibly get it. So when I come across to dry roll, all that work has been done for me. And I only want to dry roll one time when using the UTC natural. If you dry roll and over dry roll, you could be what's uh, you could be getting what's called lift. Lift is when you over dry roll, and what's happening is you're lifting up that product and causing little spikes. And then when the uh, ultimate top coat dries, you'll feel those little spikes. That's where that comes from is that lift. You know what? Time to walk away. Okay, that's it. Walk away, finish up. Uh, there's nothing more I can do. I'm going to clean off my wire rollers. I'm going to throw away um, my roller covers, and uh, that's it. We'll come back in several hours, and uh, we'll see what it looks like. I may just leave the camera rolling and get a little bit of a time lapse of uh, how that dries. I think I'll do that. Wow, this turned out really cool. This is a time lapse over about 51 minutes, but... Uh, keep in mind, I am in a uh, climate-controlled studio where I try to keep my temperature about 72 degrees, my humidity somewhere around, oh, say 30%, give or take. But you can see how all those faint lap lines completely disappeared. Uh, this piece really turned out nice. Um, I just hate it when people are having problems with the Ultimate Top Coat. It's a great product. Please reach out if you're having any problems with it. Let us help you. Let us get you across that hump. Thanks again, everybody, for watching. And once again, this is Keith McGinnis with KCDC Designs.